refused. Had we wanted to insult him, there are far worse jobs. And in this building, too, in my view, town twinning is the coup de grace. I'd far rather be a martyr to the tsetse fly than have to twin Rotherham with Bergen op Zoom. You're evading me. I'm sorry. It's a habit, as you might say. Your husband has never been a flyer, Mrs. Brock. Everyone is streamed. A slow stream, a fast stream. My husband is slow. Slow, yes. Well, what is he? First secretary struggling towards a councillor. At 41, it's not remarkable, you know. But it's got worse. You think? The last six months, he's never felt excluded from his work before. Does he feel that? I think you know he does. Well, I'm sure the intention was not to punish him. We have had some trouble placing him, it's true. The rather startling decision to desert his post. That was not his fault. We were told. We were sympathetic. Psychiatric reasons. I was daunted at the prospect of returning to Jordan. Of course. Arab psychiatry. I shudder at the thought. A heavy-handed people at the best of times. No, we understood. Family problems, our sympathy goes out. But you are blocking his advance. Mrs. Brock, believe me, I recognize your tone. Women have come in here and used it before. I'm very keen. He should not suffer on my account. I also have read the stories in your files, and nothing in your manner is likely to amaze. When you have chosen a particular course, when there is something which you very badly want. But in this matter, I must tell you, Mrs. Brock, it is more than likely you have met your match. We're speaking of achievement at the highest level. No one can expect to be cosseted through. It's not enough to be clever. Everyone here is clever. Everyone here is gifted. Everyone is diligent. These are simply the minimum skills. Far more important is an attitude of mind. Along the corridor, I boast a colleague who in 1945 advised the government not to accept the Volkswagen works as war reparation as the Volkswagen plainly had no commercial future. I must tell you, unlikely as it may seem, that man has risen to the very, very top. Perhaps you begin to understand. You are saying? I'm saying that certain qualities are valued here above a simple gift for being right or wrong. Qualities are sometimes hard to define. What you're saying is that nobody may speak. Nobody may question. Certainly, tact is valued very hard. Sir Andrew, do you never find it in yourself to despise a profession in which nobody may speak their mind? That is the nature of the surface, Mrs. Brock. It is called diplomacy. And in its practice, the English leads the world. The irony is, there was an empire to administer. There were 600 of us in this place. Now it's to be dismantled, and there are 6,000. As our power declines, the fight among us for access to that power becomes a little more urgent, a little uglier, perhaps. As our empire collapses, there is little to believe in. Behavior is all. This is a lesson which you both must learn. I must thank you for your frankness, Sir Andrew. Not at all. I must, however, warn you of my plan. If Brock is not promoted within the next six days, I am intending to shoot myself. Now, thank you, and I shan't stay for the drink. I'm due at a reception for Australia today. Begley! I always like to see just how rude I can be. Not that the Australians ever notice, so it does become a sort of zen sport, don't you think? John, I wonder, could you give me a hand if you could take Mr. Brock to surgery? No, no, people will be waiting for me at Australia House. I can't let them down. If you're It'll not be packed full well, of angry people all searching for me, all saying, Where is she? What a little. We came here to be insulted, and now there's no chance to leave me alone. I think you've destroyed my husband. You see? 